Please be seated. James chapter 1 this morning. James chapter number 1. James chapter number 1. All right. I want to start in verse number 1 and read down uh, through verse number 11 here this morning. James chapter 1, verse number 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways." Father, we thank you again for your word. Thank you for this opportunity to open it and, Lord, to read from it, to uh, study it, to preach from it today. And I pray, Lord, the words that are said here today will be from you, that, uh, again, our hearts will be moved and touched, and, Lord, that we'll get out of it what you have for us here today. If there's someone here without Christ, I pray that they'll be saved today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we have uh, gone through these first few verses. Let me remind you what we've talked about so far. James the skeptic, uh, James the saved, James the shepherd, James the servant. Next, we've talked about James and his Savior. We've talked also about James to the scattered. We've talked about James to the suffering. We've talked about James to the simple. And today, we talked to, about James to the strapped and successful. I'm trying to keep it on the S's here. It's actually to the poor and to the rich. But uh, the only S I could think of for poor is strapped. So uh, to the strapped and to the successful is what we're going to talk about here today. So it's basically to the rich and to the poor. A Sunday school teacher was teaching the lesson of Lazarus and, and uh, the rich man in the Bible. You may know that story where the rich man had everything. He fared sumptuously every day. Uh, Lazarus was a poor man, and he would eat the crumbs, and, you know, the dogs would come lick his wounds, those kind, that kind of that story we're talking about. So anyhow, this teacher had told this story to his Sunday school class, and then he asked, Now, which would you rather be, boys, the rich man or Lazarus? Now, again, if you know the story, the rich man went to hell. The Lazarus, the poor man, went to heaven. And so one little boy raised his hand and he said, Well, I'd want to be the rich man while I'm living and Lazarus when I die. Now, uh, that uh, sounds like a lot of us, does it not? We'd like to be the rich man while we're living and be Lazarus while we are dead. Now, James, again, I read all of those things because all of these verses are in context. We have to study a, a passage in context, and sometimes it, 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 the other verses around it deal with that particular thing. Well, James is in a series of verses basically uh, telling us how to deal with trials and temptations that come into our lives. How are we to deal with trials and problems uh, that come into our life, trouble when it comes into our life? How are we to handle it? Well, of course, one way James uh, tells us is to count it all joy. We're to count it all joy when, when we have these various trials in our lives. So James has mentioned that to us. He also says that uh, we need to ask for wisdom. Uh, when we, when we uh, uh, in these trials, we, we need to ask for wisdom, and God, of course, will grant that. We need to do it in faith. 
uh, not having second thoughts or wavering. And today, James is telling us when we have trials, whether we're poor or whether we're rich, we need to rejoice in our status in this world. To rejoice, to rejoice in the midst of our trials and troubles and problems. And see, it does not matter whether a person is rich or poor when it comes to trials. It does not matter if a person is healthy or unhealthy when it comes to trials. It does not matter if a person is crippled or, or sound and in, in great uh, uh, health physically. It does not matter. You are to rejoice in the Lord. Whether you're going through tough times or whether you're not going through tough times, whether you're rich or poor, you are to rejoice in the Lord. Now, I'll remind you this morning that trials, trials have no respect for status. Trials have no respect for status. Uh, trials have no respect for whether you're rich or whether you're poor. Uh, poor people have trials, and, and some poor people will even say, well, being poor is a trial. But poor people have trials, and I got news for you, rich people have trials as well. Poor people have problems, and rich people have problems. Matter of fact, many times it's a curse to be rich. Did you know that? Many times it is. Uh, uh, many times the rich person is the one who has more problems because they have the money to do things that, if, that they probably wouldn't do if they didn't have the money to do it. A lot of rich people get involved in drugs and drinking and, and, and carrying on. And let me tell you something, that's, that's very sad. Uh, we ought to be careful. You know, we, again, we all want to be the rich man when we're alive and, the, and Lazarus when we're dead. Well, let me tell you something. You better be careful about praying that God would make you rich. Because a rich man has a whole lot of trouble. And we're going to talk about that uh, today. Now, again, poor people, uh, they, they have their trials as well. So rich and poor, there, there's no respect for status in this world when it comes to trials. Now, a rich person may have a little bit more means uh, to deal with their trials. But I got news for you. They still have plenty of problems and plenty of trials. And, and a lot of times money is worthless when it comes to your problems. Money is worth it. You've, you've heard it many times, of course. Uh, you know, your money cannot buy your health. I mean, it can buy you doctors and medicines, but it still uh, can't buy you health. And so many other things, as, as we know. Now, he writes here in verse number nine to the brother of low degree. I love that he calls him a brother, a brother in Christ. And again, we're still talking to these people who are scattered abroad, all these brothers in Christ who are scattered abroad here. Uh, he's writing to them, and he, and he calls him brothers, and they're of low degree, but that brother of low degree should rejoice in that he is exalted. Now, in the world's eyes, in the world's eyes, a poor person, a lowly person, a powerless person, a person who is lacking in material possessions, many times they are looked down upon. They're looked down upon by others. And many of these Jewish Christians who have been scattered abroad would be in such circumstances. They would be, they would be looked down upon. They were struggling uh, in their finances. You know, uh, a lot of the Jewish Christians, again, had to scatter, had to get out of town because people even maybe even wanted them dead. And they were, they were also facing Roman authorities. But many of their families, many of their families turned their back completely on them. And so that's one of the reasons why they were poor. <laughs> because uh, nobody would have anything to do with them because they accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. But James tells them, he said, listen, if you're in, if, if you're, uh, uh, in humble circumstances, you're the poor of this world, you're of low degree, rejoice in that you are exalted. So they're not to rejoice necessarily because they're poor, but they're to rejoice in the Lord despite their circumstances, no matter how terrible they may, they may be because Christ loves the lowly person and Jesus Christ died for the lowly person and he has promised to exalt them as a king and as a prince throughout all eternity. You may be poor here today. But I got news for you. If you know Jesus Christ as Savior, you're a child of the King. Amen. 
And we should rejoice in that. Don't go around with a pity party all the time. Well, you know, I just don't have this and I don't have that and I don't have what everybody else has and I can't get this. Listen, you're a child of the king. Rejoice in that you're exalted. Live like it is what he says. Uh, live like you're a child of the king. Have the attitude today that you're a child of the king. Don't act like a victim. Too many poor people act like victims. Don't act like a victim. You know, too many poor people, they, they want the government to take care of them. And, and how, how sad that is. Now, I mean, it has a place. There's a place for that. But that's all they're interested in is other people taking care of them. And you know very well there's a lot of poor people, quote, poor people, that turn to crime because of their poverty. Matter of fact, you'll hear that a lot of times. Well, you know, uh, uh, they, they, did, they did that crime because, you know, they're poor. Well, how many of y'all grew up poor? How many of y'all turned to crime because you were poor? Let me tell you something. There's a lot of people who grew up in, in that's sitting right here in this building who grew up dirt poor. Uh, and, and you didn't turn to crime to take care of your poverty. You just kept on doing right. And for many of you who were, grew up dirt poor, God has blessed you tremendously. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, you don't have to turn to crime to do that. When anybody makes that excuse, that, that's all it is. It's an excuse. Uh, and, and we've got a lot of people walking around uh, here today that's uh, supposedly in poverty. We've got a man that lives in this neighborhood that takes a sign out to the road every day and says he's homeless. And he lives in a home right over here on Bliss Avenue. How sad that is. And uh, uh, it, it's pitiful. Listen. Uh, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Contrary to the world's opinion. God's opinion of you gives you great worth. Jesus Christ came to die on the cross for you, whether you're rich or whether you're poor. And, and you should rejoice in the fact that God sees you as worthy. The world may not see you as worthy, but God does. Matter of fact, over in Jeremiah chapter 9, the Bible talks about this. People in the world today boast about their wisdom and their education. Some of the smartest, smartest people in the world are, in the world are some of the dumbest. They boast about their education. We got people that boast about their strength. You know, they, they're, they're strong and they got athletic prowess and that. Let me tell you something, that's some of the dumbest people in the world, a lot of them. They boast about their strength, though. And people boast about their riches. You know how rich I am. You know what Jeremiah chapter 9 says? Don't boast about your education, your wisdom. Don't boast about your strength. Don't boast about your riches. But he, he goes on to say, but you boast in the fact that you know God. That's what you should boast about. That you know God. Because that is what God delights in. Now, he tells the brother of low degree, rejoice in that he is exalted. Now, rejoice in the fact that you may be facing trials. You may be facing persecution. But again, you, take, uh, uh, um, the, the, you understand the fact that you have been given as God's children, that you have a very high position. The world may look at you and say, well, you don't look much. You don't look like much. Uh, uh, you know, you've got a lot of problems in your life, but listen, the, the poor people go through their problems and then they come out on the other side uh, 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 doing what God wants them to do. And the Bible says they will not lack anything. That's what verse 4 says. They'll not lack anything. Listen, what you have in Jesus Christ outweighs anything in this life, outweighs any material possession, any bank account you've got, anything you've got. What you have in Jesus Christ outweighs that. Knowing Him gives us high position, and we can find true dignity in life. When I was in uh, high school, I was in a singing group, and we, we did a little tour and uh, would sing some. And uh, one of the guys in our singing group uh, would sing a song entitled, I'm a Poor Rich Man. Rusty Goodman wrote it many years ago. Here's some of the words. Well, we usually judge a man by the clothes he wears or by the car he's riding in. 
Or you can usually tell if he's doing very well by the house he's living in. But I'm here to say it doesn't work that way with everybody I know because I just got acquainted with some poor rich folks a little while ago. And it says, I'm a poor rich man. I'm a poor rich man. Oh, you see, it really happened to me. I'm a millionaire. I know that I'm poor, but I've got a lot more than many rich folks that I know. I've got a home in the sky that money didn't buy, and I'm a poor rich man. And I got news for you today. I am, I, I'm a poor rich man as well. And I thank God, you know, the lowly position that we have, uh, we uh, uh, can rejoice in that we have been exalted. Now, again, a lot of poor people start having their pity party, let their circumstances dull and numb and destroy their spirit and joy in life. A lot of poor people become bitter against those that do have certain things in this world and they seek to have what some of those things and, and they think life is all about things. Jesus said life is more than just the things in this world, the material possessions of this world. And many poor people develop a sense of inferiority and inadequacy and, and they take on a withdrawn uh, or, or slavish type of behavior. And so that's what James is saying to these people today. Don't do that. Rejoice. The brother of low degree, rejoice in life. Uh, no matter your status in life, do not allow circumstances, no matter how terrible, to destroy your joy or to make you bitter or inferior, to feel inferior or withdrawn. Rejoice. You're a child of the king. And we must never forget God nor the glorious salvation and exaltation to which God has raised us. Rejoice in that we are exalted. No matter what problems you're going through, I'll remind you again. There's one thing. Listen, uh, your money can be taken away. You know, you can lose your money. You can lose your health. You can, you can lose people in your life. You can lose possessions in your life. You can lose positions in your life. But I remind you, there's one thing. There's one thing that you cannot lose if you're saved this morning. And that is your salvation. Your sal you cannot lose it. So sit back, folks, and have a good time. Rejoice in that we have salvation that cannot be taken away from us. I'm a child of the King, and that cannot be taken away from me. Then he talks to the rich in verse 10 and 11. The poor in verse 9 are the strapped. In verse 10, he talks to the successful or the rich. And by the way, you know rich is a relative term, right? Rich is a relative term. Uh, if you look around this room this morning, uh, to many people of the world, every person in this room is rich. Do you know that? E to many people in this world, every person in here is rich. Uh, how many of you came in an automobile this morning? Anybody have to walk 10 miles? Nobody had to walk 10 miles. Anybody had to ride a bicycle? How many of you almost got left at home this morning because you wasn't ready in time? Uh, 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 I know how that goes sometimes. Uh, we, uh, how many of you uh, slept with a roof over your head last night? How many of you had a nice comfortable bed to sleep in? How many of you had food uh, that's in your pantry? You woke up and ate something this morning. Looking forward to lunch today. How many of you plan to eat lunch today? Anybody here going to eat lunch? I guarantee you, everybody here will eat lunch. Uh, how many of you going to eat supper tonight? Going to eat supper tonight. How many of you going to eat between lunch and supper? Uh, 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 how many of you going to eat after supper? Uh, 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 let's, let's get it all figured out here, right? I tell you, every, every now and then, are y'all like me every now and then? That's a little aside here for just a moment. Are y'all, I, I usually eat two meals a day is what I normally do. But every now and then, I don't know what, I just, I, I, I'm just hungry. I'm just hungry. And I just got to eat. Uh, uh, I just got to eat. And so, it, you know, it happens to us all. I try to watch it, but anyhow, it happens. I, I, listen, I've been there before where I would eat all the time, and I was this big around. So I, I'm, I refuse to get that big anymore, I will tell you that much. I just refuse to get that big anymore. Now, let's get off a diet and talk about the rich. Rich people who's got plenty of money to buy food and eat all they want. Well, the Bible says 
but the rich in that he is made low. So the brother of low degree is exalted and the rich is made low by God. Now you say, why is that? Well, listen to this very closely. You know, a rich person is not accepted by God because they are rich. Now again, the rich people in our world today, you know, they get a lot of perks and they get a lot of this and a lot of that. They can do things that, you know, us mere mortals cannot do and those kind of things. But uh, let me tell you something. <laughs> listen, listen to this, folks. And listen, nothing wrong with being rich either, by the way. Nothing wrong with being rich. Plenty of rich people in the Bible that God used in a great way. But if, you, if you're living for money and love money, that's your goal in life, then you're doing the wrong thing. But I'll tell you this much. Listen to this. God is not impressed with what you have in your bank account. He's not impressed. Because you know what? He owns all the cattle on a thousand hills, the wealth in every mine. He's not impressed. He's the one that, that uh, uh, called this universe into being. He's not impressed with what you have. He says, I'm going to bring them down. Because, see, the, the rich and high status people mean absolutely, because of your high status, that, that's nothing to God. And what are your riches compared to God's? See, the rich person has to come to God the same way a poor person does. A poor person really has nothing to bring to God, per se. A rich person, you know, would have a lot to bring to God. But I got news for you. When a rich person comes to God, they have to come to God empty-handed, bare. And as, as, as nothing and as having nothing. Approach him as a little child, poor and without anything, because that is the only way God accepts anybody, whether you're rich or poor. So the rich and the high are no better off than the poor and the lowly. Can you imagine uh, Bill Gates or some of these other rich people? Jeff Bezos or somebody standing before God one day, which they will. They will stand before God one day. And said, uh, God, let me pull my wallet out here. Let me pull my wallet out here. And uh, how, mu how much is it to get in this place? How much is it? Some of those guys could give every one of us in this room this morning $10 million and they wouldn't even miss it. They wouldn't even miss it. Imagine that. Wouldn't even miss it. Now, by the way, don't, don't be begging for it because, uh, uh, again, riches can very well ruin you and make you not even think about God. But your riches are not going to get you into heaven. Every man, every woman ever born on planet Earth stands before God as an equal. God does not look at you, whether you're in essence to, to enter the kingdom of heaven. He doesn't look at you as rich or poor. He looks at you as saved or unsaved. Jesus even said, he said, it's hard for a rich man to get saved. It's hard. Because they are more concerned with their riches. He said it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle. But of course, what's impossible with man is possible with God. Now, most of these Jews that were scattered abroad, they were poor. Some of them were rich even. But James reminds them not to measure their worth by their riches, nor to depend on their possessions for security, because earthly treasures do not last. Here just recently... We've had a hurricane by the name of Ian. Ian uh, tore up a place that Dane and I are very familiar with, that we've been to numbers of times. We were just there a month ago, the end of August. We spent a week on this island down there. Stayed right on the beach. Uh, we uh, have been down there about six or seven times now. And, and we, we know all about that island. Because we've been looking at things, and we say, yeah, that's that, and then the roads, and, and all that kind of stuff down there. Do you know that people, uh, and there's some big houses on that place, I mean some big ones, multi-million dollar houses down there. Uh, some of them half a million dollars down there, plenty of big old houses. But now those people, houses, many of them, have been destroyed 
and major damage down there. Don't tell me, that, and, 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 and most of what they've got, let me tell you something, if the, if the wind didn't get them, the water is what really got them because the water came in at about 14 to 16 feet high and came through that whole island and, and just in everybody's house they've got water. Some of them they've got water, you know, up to here in their house. Every one of them. Every one of them. So all those material things and all that stuff, they are finding uh, pictures and, and different things from somebody's house, you know, three or four blocks down this way uh, because of what happened and what took place. You can, you can bank yourself on your riches all you want, but I got news for you. It can be done away with just like that. Taken away just like all of, all of your possessions and things can be taken away just like that. They're fleeting. Again, there's nothing wrong with being rich. It's made out to be a crime today by many people, but I got news for you. A, a, a rich person, however, needs God's perspective on wealth so they will use it humbly and, and productively in God's kingdom. We've talked about D. Dodson and Bob Dodson. They went over to uh, Tanzania and established about six churches. They've been over there about 30 years. Bob's in heaven now, but D's going back to finish up the job. Um, they started about six churches, and then about 15 years ago, a very, 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 very wealthy man, Mr. Rawlings, Harold Rawlings was his name, is his name. He's still alive. His daddy was a pastor in Cincinnati for years named John Rawlings. And you ever want to meet this guy, he was a character. Uh, anyhow, Harold Rawlings became a multimillionaire. But you know what uh, he wanted to do with his money? He went to Bob Dotson. He said, I want to give you all the money you need over here to build a youth camp in Tanzania, Africa. I want to give you all the money you need. I will, I will pay every dime of what you need to set up a youth camp over here. And Mr. Rawlings gave them millions of dollars and they set up a youth camp. And if you read the letter from D this week, over 800,000 kids from Tanzania have come through that camp. And they know of at least 80,000 people have given their lives to Christ through that camp in the last 12 years or so when it was in operation. Now that is using your money for the things of God. Too many rich people, what do they do? They buy big houses and they buy big cars and they do this and they do that. Use your money for the Lord. Now again, most of us here today would be considered rich by many people in this world. And by the way, let me say this. You may not be rich, rich, rich here this morning, but we all live comfortably, do we not? We all have a comfortable life. We all live comfortably. Thank God we're able to pay our bills and have air conditioning in the summer and heat in the winter and food on our table. And if we, uh, you know, we got chairs to sit in in the house, we got a roof over our head, but I'll tell you this much, just like Sanibel down there, the only real lasting security, however, is in a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's it. All of these things, all of this comfort even that we have. Let me tell you something, the, the security. I mean, you know, Lord forbid, but this building could burn up this week. Your house could burn up this week. Uh, all sorts of things could happen this week. But our only security is in a relationship with Christ because that can never be taken away with. But too many millionaires trust in their riches. I read this story about this young man. He said this to a millionaire. He said, this young man said this to a millionaire. Listen to this. This is very important. He said, you are to be more envied than anyone I know. That's what that young man said to a millionaire. The millionaire said, why so? I'm not aware of any cause for which I should be envied. What, sir, the young man exclaimed in surprise. Why, you are a millionaire. Think of all the thousands your income brings in every month. He says, well, what of that? 
He said, all I get out of it is my food and clothes, and I can't eat more than one man's allowance and wear more than one suit of clothes at a time. Even you can do as much as I can do, can't you? Ah, yes, the young man said, but think of the hundreds of fine houses you own and the rentals they bring you. The millionaire said, well, what better am I all for that? I can only live in one house at a time. As for the money I receive for rent, why well, I can't eat it or wear it. I can only use it to buy other houses for other people to live in. They are the beneficiaries, not I. And then finally, after a little more discussion, the millionaire turned to the young man and he said, I can tell you that the less you desire in this world, the happier you will be. All my wealth can't buy me a single day more of life, cannot buy back my youth, cannot procure me power to keep off the hour of death, and then what will all avail when in a few short years at most I must lie down in the grave and leave it all forever? Young man, you have no cause to envy me. And how true it is. He tells the rich man in verse 11, he says, The sun is no sooner risen with burning heat, but it withers the grass. The flower there falleth, the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Well, he's talking about death, of course, and we all resist thinking about death. By the way, death is the greatest trial. He's talking about trials and troubles here. Death is the greatest trial that we'll ever go through. But James says, uh, 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 if, if you resist thoughts of death, that is a significant danger because you see, wealth brings false security. Wealth brings false security. You think I can always buy myself out of something. You know, in the desert, uh, 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 you have a little bit of the dew and, 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 and it's cool and, and things sprout up, but by the middle of the day, things are dead again. You see that even around here. You know, in the morning, we have a heavy dew and, and, and the grass will be green. But as the hot sun beats down on it, it withers away, withers down. The abundant comfort and security of one moment is gone the next. So James is saying, who do you trust? Who do you trust? Suffering and trials are all around us. Remind us that we're human. We're going to pass away. Wealth brings temporary protection, but death cannot be bought off. And see, we believers, we know about wealth. We should and know that it's not going to do us any good on judgment day. People have a grip on this world and a grip on, on things and a grip on money so hard, it's hard to get away. And, and, and they're, they're ignoring the, the, the fact of their mortality. Matter of fact, he's talking here, he says, death's coming to all. Whether you're rich or whether you're poor, it's coming. It's coming to all. Isn't it amazing that... Um, you know, we, we report, quote, uh, you see on the news, people that die. Uh, uh, I've, I've never seen on the news uh, any Hope Baptist Church people that's ever died. I've never seen that. Uh, you don't see that. But all of a sudden, you know, you'll see this week, um, who was it? Uh, was it Loretta Lynn? Is that the one that died? You know, she died. And, and, you know, she's 90 years old or whatever. And, you know, she's famous and rich and all that, singing. But uh, it, it's almost like, oh. <gasps> Loretta Lynn died. I can't believe it. All it does is appointed an, it's appointed a man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. Hebrews 9, 27 is proven true. Jesus even told a parable. He said, listen, there's this rich man who had more money than he could ever use. And he said, you know what? I think it's time for us to tear down those barns over there and build some bigger ones so we can have more, 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 and we got to have more. We need more. I got more than I'll ever use now, but I want some more. And Jesus said, Tonight thy soul shall be required of thee. In other words, the man had plenty, but he wasn't ready to die. How sad that is. Life is uncertain, disaster, possible at any moment. 
And it is foolish to trust, and that will, that will not last, and that is death. Death will interrupt our schedule, our best laid plans, but we should pray as the psalmist to teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Well, I love the fact that James is saying, listen, if you're the brother of low degree, don't be down about that. Be excited. If you know Jesus Christ the Savior, be glad you're a child of the King. Live like it. Think like it. Act like it. But if you're rich and you don't know the Lord, you better get right with God and you better use your riches. See, the riches of this world will certainly fade away. And James says the rich man also will fade away. If you put your life and your identity into things that fade away, you're going to fade away also. How much better is it to put our life and identity into things that will never fade? And listen to this. If a man is only rich in this world, if a man is only rich in this world, when he dies, he leaves his riches. But if a man is rich before God, when he dies, he goes to his riches. And that's what we, that's the side I want to be on. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Talking to the poor and to the rich. How they're going to handle the things of life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, you can be saved today. In our invitation time. Father, thank you for your instructions for us today. Lord, I pray that uh, we'll certainly look at things the way that you do. Thank you for the reminder today. If someone needs to be saved, I pray they'll come. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with us? Here's about nine.